This is a video for the operators of commercial ships and for the insurance companies that underwrite separately the ships, the crew and the cargo. And it's also a video for venture capitalists. And the subject is protection of commercial ships against guided missile attack. Now, right now in the Red Sea, commercial ships are under attack primarily by two types of weapons, IED drones and RF homing anti-ship missiles. And militaries from several countries have reacted to this by protecting the commercial ships. But that's incidental to uh, protecting their shared political interests. They're not protecting the commercial ships because they care about ships. It's because there is a political agenda behind uh, defending the ships. Now, the military right now are using two main methods to protect those ships. The first is to shoot down airborne missiles. And the second is to destroy the uh, missile installations and the operators before missile launch. But this is not, sus not a sustainable solution. I mean, uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, destroying uh, the missiles before launch risks, seriously risks, enlarging the conflict. And in any case, formerly safe uh, shipping passages are no longer viable unless all the missiles have been destroyed or if the aggressors decide to stop. Meanwhile, the economy, the world economy, is compromised and climate change is exacerbated because these many ships have to take longer routes, therefore they're burning more fossil fuels. But the bottom line, anyway, is that commercial ships have been identified as useful targets, proven to be useful targets for advancing political agendas, and that genie is not going back in the bottle. Now, the military will sporadically protect commercial ships when it's in their interest to do so, but it is unrealistic to think that it will be in their interest to protect all ships all the time indefinitely. So we can ask, what can the commercial ship owners and operators do on their own uh, without military assistance? Well, one thing they can't do is uh, fit their ships with military lethal weapons like Gatling guns or anti-missile missiles because those systems simply cannot be bought by commercial interests. They are closely held and, and guarded and owned by the military and they are subject to strict end-user license agreements. But there is an interesting alternative to use military-like technology to protect commercial ships. And by that I mean an anti-ship missile jammer for commercial applications. So, you know, it's, non, it's interesting because it's non-lethal. We radiate some RF signals to confuse the missile and, um, you know, nobody gets hurt, but the missile doesn't hit anything either. So how might that look? Well, imagine an ISO container fitted with prime power and cooling, and there's a jammer in there and antennas that poke out the top. And the ISO container is set down without any deck penetration on a commercial ship deck, like on a container ship or an um, uh, oil tanker or whatever. And uh, you, you turn the jammer on, hit the big green button, it's automa fully automatic. And as the ship steams through the problem area, then uh, the jammer is listening for the signature, the RF signature of an inbound missile. And if it detects something, it takes steps to send the missile in the wrong direction. That's the idea. This is a simulated engagement between an anti-ship missile and an oil tanker. The application is called Engage. I wrote it over the past 24 years, and it has been proven correct multiple times by comparing its predictions with the results from trials involving real missile seekers. Now, this is a temporary installation on board a commercial ship, by the way. We don't need every commercial ship to have a jammer on board all the time. It only needs one while it's going through a, an, a region where there might be a missile attack. And when it gets to the other side, we use a crane to lift the ISO container off the ship and put it on the deck of another ship heading in the opposite direction. That's the concept. Now, there are jammers available right now that could, in principle, be used to protect commercial ships. But there's a catch. The user has to program the jammer. The jammers don't come with jam programs. So that requires specialist work and it depends on classified information which is owned by governments. So it's not transferable to private industry. So the commercially available jammers right now, unless you can program it, it's useless. But what if there was a different approach? What if uh, the jammer came programmed with a, a, a rule set, a behavioral rule set, instead of a bunch of classified parameters. A different approach, a new approach. Well, that can be done right now with existing proven technology, and I'd like to take the next couple of minutes to explain how that could be done. 
For anyone who's interested in the technical details of jamming radar homing missiles, it's necessary to understand the relationship between angle deception countermeasures and range deception countermeasures, because it's essential to have both. And there's a video link in the uh, description uh, below that shows a video about that, the history of uh, onboard and offboard countermeasures. Now, onboard range deception countermeasures are well handled right now by uh, several manufacturers of digital RF memory or DRIFM jammers, so that's no problem. Now, but it is essential to have the angle deception piece also, otherwise the missile will fly through the ship. And I made a video about that, here's a link, and I'll post the link in the description below. So, when it comes to onboard angle deception countermeasures, there are very few options to peel a monopulse seeker off its target once the target has been acquired. But they have one thing in common, they all these all the techniques that work um, attack the electromagnetic properties of the seeker antenna. So the angle tracking function of the seeker is damaged before the signal sophisticated signal processing even starts. And a good option for onboard angle deception countermeasure is cross-polarization jamming or cross-pole jamming, but it has to be done cognitively to work. The fastest and least expensive way to field a missile jammer for commercial ships is to make one modification to an existing military jammer. Add a cognitive controller. The controller is a software module which coordinates angle deception like cross-pole jamming and the jammer's RF transmitter. Now this modification changes two things. Change number one, for the first time ever there is a real-time effectiveness feedback loop so the jammer is able to confirm that it is deflecting the missile into an unrecoverable heading error. That's the definition of soft kill, a missile that is so far off course that it can't turn hard enough to correct the error and hit the target. A missile in this condition is still in the air, but it's harmless. Change number two, and probably the more important of the two, there is no need to use a classified government-owned database to figure out what countermeasure to use. If one's available, great, but it's not necessary. You don't program this jammer, it comes ready to switch on. The jammer customizes its actions to the evolving missile attack, but it doesn't care what kind of missile has been fired. Now, there is a cognitive controller called Invicta, created by Sky Industries, which has been tested against real missile seekers, but it's not yet in service. And here's a link to a description of it. The Invicta controller has been successfully integrated with the, the iRoots Digital RF Memory Jammer produced by MC Countermeasures. Now, this was an internally funded demonstration project, and it's relevant because iRoots is in service with the Canadian Navy in the Ramsey's BL2 Jammer as part of a $94.6 million technology refresh as reported in the Journal of Electronic Defense a few years ago. Now, according to a somewhat obscure article in Ottawa Valley News, BL2 has been containerized. I have no knowledge of this project other than the article and the photograph that accompanies it. Now, arguably the fastest route to field a jammer for commercial ships would be to apply the software upgrade, the controller, to a containerized BL2 jammer and confirm, again, that it works against real missile seekers, then build a, and commission a second copy. Then use the original containerized system as a test bed for additional confirmation tests and the inevitable improvements that will uh, accrue to the iRoots Invicta cognitive core. Alternatively, the Invicta controller could be fit to Scorpion 2, which is produced by Talus, or the Raven jammer produced by Lockheed Martin Canada. Both are cross-pole jammers. In conclusion, using anti-ship missiles to take pot shots at commercial ships will upend the shipping industry, and that is the tip of a very big iceberg. Now, there are also IED drones to worry about, but I don't know how much damage uh, a drone with an HE high explosive payload could really do to a tanker or a container ship. I mean, it might start a fire or it certainly would scare the crap out of people, but at the end of the day, you might just have to send down a paint crew. But in an anti-ship missile, that's a different situation. For example, the old Soviet Cold War era Soviet SSN-2s, I mean, that's a small airplane. That will punch a significant hole in a container ship or a, a tanker. Uh, so that, those things can do real damage. And bad actors have realized that they have a new avenue for what is essentially terrorist bombing. And that's to use these anti-ship missiles by which they can exert real influence over powerful countries. Now if they can get a hold of a million dollar missile, they can sink or cripple a 200 million dollar ship and then simultaneously tie up a billion dollar military and disrupt a trillion dollar economy. 
And as sure as God made little green apples, the voting public will blame their elected officials as soon as the prices start to go up because the shipping routes have changed. Right or wrong, they'll do it. Anyway, a counterweight is needed for this immediately, and that's the subject of this video. And I can hear the, insur the insurance companies and the commercial shipping companies right now. Oh, if there was one of those available, we'd buy it. We'd buy as many as we need. The trouble is the device, as described in this video, does not exist at present, but it could. Now, I and several colleagues have, after 20 years of silent, successful work, brought the technology to the one-yard line. There is no more technical risk here. It's over, it's done, it's been handled. So the next thing that happened is that it ha has to happen is that the core technology has to be licensed and developed and productized and brought to market by a large company. And that means creating the first article system and uh, putting production contracts in place with suppliers and then uh, selling and commissioning and maintaining and servicing the first ever jammer for a commercial ship. There is nothing like it on the market. It's completely open at present. And I think the market might actually be bigger than commercial uh, shipping industry. It might also include navies around the world, military navies that cannot program the jammers they are able to buy because they don't have the classified database or they don't have the skill set or the knowledge or the experience. So they might also be uh, a market for this thing. Um, we're talking about a, a system that doesn't have to be programmed. It already comes ready to go. There's a little bit of artificial intelligence in there and it's based on rule sets instead of fixed parameters. So it's a different approach. And I think, frankly, the spin-offs might be bigger than the jammer.